Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here with I, I guess the best way to describe I don't I don't know where how to describe you exactly other than I, I, I you're becoming a legend if nothing else. <laughs> and my spare time. I mean that sincerely. I'm going. Good God, man! I mean you you know you were interviewed on national television 30 years ago. Yeah, I yeah. got very lucky. I got to be on some of the good shows at the uh, when I first started out. I did. A lot of Conan O'Briens. I did two Letterman's. I it was on Regis and Kathy Lee, and done uh, Colbert with uh, James Taylor. So I've been. Yeah, I saw, actually I saw that. That was a good one. I, I had was, my I, father's D'Angelico on that. <laughs> I had the TV. I had the TV on when that was happening. I was like, man, that is, that is so freaking cool. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, it, it really was cool. I mean, I saw yeah. it in real time. I, I was going, man, I, I'm digging this. So, I, you know, our magazine is called Jazz Guitar Today. So you've got so much rich history. It's hard not to delve into it a little bit. It's okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I love what you've did, done with the place, too, by the way. I, the backdrop is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty good. We've got a little office space, so we got all of our – my wife's shows are over there, and then there's a canvas here and guitar. I love it. There, so we've got to hide everything. I love the box. I'm thinking the box is my, yeah. is my, my favorite thing. That's the new CD. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, I love it. So you got a new CD coming out. Yes. Stage and screen. Yeah, we made a record with uh, Isaiah Thompson on piano and my and Michael Karn on bass. And uh, it's I, I've been saying it's the first... Uh, uh, CD I've done of, of non Nat King Cole material. I've done about fifteen Nat Cole records, I think, over the years. And uh, you know, uh, I'm a huge fan. I know, obviously, you are, but I'm a huge fan of of Nat Cole. I mean, I yeah. I, well, that's the reason why I do what I do. You know, so that was uh, that was the introduction to all of this was Nat King Cole was that sound of that group and everything. So yeah. uh, this was just a a, a new a, a new piece of. Uh, of of what's going on so we were able to make a record and get it out there and, and now go on tour Woo! so let's talk about this a little bit stage and screen um I, obviously I've, I've read the press releases and i know so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask a lot of questions i know the answers to That's okay. <laughs> but, but but a lot of people don't so let's let's go with that so tell us about stage and screen what's up with stage and screen well basically you know i'll tell you the the uh the honest to goodness thing is <laughs> When we started to work again, uh, and Isaiah had just joined the group, he joined the group in December of 2019. His last gig with me was March 13th of 2020, so just uh, three years ago the other day. And uh, so we started to work again. We were just picking tunes, and we started playing stuff. I said, and I was sort of, instead of saying to Isaiah, learn all the stuff that we've done, we, we were sort of trying to find a new repertoire, just come up with things. And so we were playing I Want to Be Happy and T for Two and coming up with other tunes that were, I've been doing this Thursday night show on Facebook and uh, taking requests. So there were songs that would come out of that. So we just started adding these things. And then I just was going, I know we're going to eventually record. Uh, I need something new. And uh, stage and screen just was like, oh, that's from a show. That's from a musical. That's from a t uh, from a movie, and it just that was the, it was literally like, well, stage and screen sounds good, and it'll work because everything's from somewhere, and uh, there were some unusual things and some obvious things, but it was just uh, it was the easiest thing to come up with uh, uh, on the spur of the moment. <laughs> A little music interlude. Is that the D'Angelico? That is. Oh my God. Unbelievable. That's a good one. Oh my God. Well, I, think, I don't know if there's a bad one, but my God. Oh yeah, no, this was a, yeah, this is a this is a nice one. Uh this was the one I believe that was painted white originally. And he stripped because uh, they had all white instruments in the three suns. 
Right. So it was spray painted white, and then he stripped it. I don't know when it was stripped, but it's a hell of a little guitar. It really is. A... This is a low end on that thing. Good it's night. Great, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that low E string sounds like a freaking piano. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. I just, you know, I, I had it here and I just played it today. I tried to, I have another one uh, upstate that my father had. Uh, yeah. father looked at, and uh, I bang on them every once in a while just to keep them vibrating. Yeah. And I took this one out today and I was like, geez, I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love it. So, so I uh, I managed to move the uh, to move the chainsaw guy for a little while. He, you know, he, so I can't believe it. Like of all days, you know, he's like right outside my window. I'm going, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, um, so we were talking about stage and screen. Let, let's continue down that path for a little bit. Yeah. So I mean, we were just you know, I mean, literally, um, some it was it was the idea that I knew where they all, all these songs came from and decided that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the theme. It, you know, it was no, it, there was not a lot of thought that went behind it other than <laughs> this is where they came from. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, you're an interesting guy, you know, you're a guitarist, right? Mm -hmm. like you're a vocalist. Know. You're a vocalist. Yep. You're um, a bit of a, com a, a comic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen your shows, you know, I mean, you're an entertainer. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, among other things, and you're you're a personality, you're a spokesperson. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you're particularly a, a spokesperson, an advocate, if not the the guy with the torch, for a, a very specific genre. You know, I mean, you know that the, that thing you do. I mean, yeah. you're the you're the guy. I mean, well, you know, it, it, it's I think coming out of the the era that I came out of. I mean, I I used to. Uh, like as much of uh, uh, watching the music being played at a very high level in, in my home, you know. Right. So I'm very lucky to hear Zoot Sims and Slam Stewart and uh, Les Paul and people like that playing in my house and go on gigs with my father. And so when people, you know, in, in that day, the listeners of the music 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when I started, were my father's age. You know, they were. Right. They were so if he was, he wasn't even 60 yet. Uh, so he's about 55. And so everybody was that age. And right. now it's a, it's a larger group only because now I'm that age, you know. So uh, it's really wild. But, um, and, and the other thing was, I always loved to watch how people communicated or told a story or I, I loved George Carlin and I loved watching Johnny Carson deliver a joke or tell a story. I loved the way guys would tell stories when I say that the three biggest moments of uh, inspiration for what I was going to do was seeing Billy Joel in 1983 at the Brendan Byrne Arena, Sinatra in 86 and Springsteen, because it wasn't about the music. It was about how they presented the music. Absolutely. It was so stunning. You know, it was like, oh, there's a way I can do that for what I do. Absolutely. Well, you do it, you do it really well. I mean, you're, um, you're quick, you know? Well, I try to be, you know, that's, if you're quick, you're a harder target. <laughs> 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 oh man i'm gonna steal that one i love that so uh there's so many things uh, let's let's talk about um it's so the, the album i mean I've, I've heard three three tracks Great. you know from the record and a couple things jump out at me um the first thing that jumped out at me was how hard it swings oh you know uh which okay. you know three and and the the second thing that jumped out at me, the three things that really jumped out at me. One is how hard it swings. Um, your I want to talk about your scatting, and your playing separately for just a second. But uh, is um, uh, Isaiah, I believe. Yeah, on piano. On piano. There's that is so good. 
I, I, it's, it's your engineer. I mean, take him out for a bagel. Right. I mean, oh, I, I mean, <laughs> good, exactly. good. You know, he started that engineer started uh, with at Nola Recording in New York, where we made a lot of our records, and now he's the engineer. And you know, he's the one of the few guys when you when you bring this guitar into a studio, it wasn't this guitar that I used. No. Like when Bucky would come in and he'd say, "Right here." That's where right. the mic goes, and so you it, and all he did was listen, and and so when Bucky start to play, he'd say that's where it is. He knew what mic to put there, and right? He, and he paid attention. Well, and the, the a great recording. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, John. I'm mean, interrupting. Well, no, he's, it is. It is. He. He's a Bill Moss is a special person. He. He's the same person as I am at in in audio work that I feel like I am for guitar. You know, he's. He started with the right guys, paid attention, and now that he's doing it, you know, he's he's really great at it. I feel like, you know, that's the same. What's story. really cool is I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of great performances and I've heard a lot of great recordings. I haven't heard a lot of great performances and recordings at the same time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like, wow, that 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 recording is great. Guy didn't play all that well, but the recording was great. <laughs> um <laughs> But in, in this case, my God, I mean, the piano, the articulation of the piano and the guitar together and separating them and keeping them together. Those are two different, as you know, you took on the challenge, you know, getting guitar, a guitar and a grand piano to, to play nicely together harmonically and, and all that and the bandwidth that you guys both have to, you know, I mean, that that's an art form in and of itself that when you see you guys play the three of you play the the interweaving that has to go on in order to make that sound like music and not a cacophony, right? Is 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 incredible, and and you do it perfectly. I mean, it really really well. And well, uh, I, I actually, the, it is something. It is something that you think we think about too when we meet new people, especially with Mike being uh, about six years ago when we said. Uh, you know, we had, I had worked with uh, drums for for a number, oh, about 15 years. And for monetary reasons, we had to go to Europe. Not for monetary reasons. We had to go to Europe, but we <laughs> was either going to be with dr as a drum trio, drums, bass, guitar, or what I preferred was piano, bass, and guitar. Right. And so I said to Mike, I said, well, we got to figure this out and make sure we can do this without drums. So we, we got this little gig and we started to play and we went, oh, this is going to be fine. And so we knew, you know, there's some bass players and piano players you're not going to do that with. And right. in this case, so once uh, 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 Isaiah joined the band too, it was sort of, he was even sort of like, oh, you guys got a thing. You know, you have your, I see how this works, you know, and it, it was, uh, you know, that was... I think it's been just part of what we, you know, it's in our DNA. Yeah. It's in our DNA, so you don't know how to do that. Well, the recording is great. I mean, uh, the 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 piano sounds incredible. The guitar sounds great. I mean, the um, the actual the actual recording of the instruments is great. And then, of course, the performances are wonderful. Thanks. I mean, you can tell you guys, you know, you play together, you like each other, you're making music together. There's a, you know, it's just, the the collaboration is so there. The conversations are all. It's just great. And um, so I highly recommend it. By the way, I highly recommend that you go out and get this record when it becomes available in a couple of weeks. A week next week, I think it is April twenty first. April twenty first. Yeah, I highly recommend you get this record. It's it's a great recording. It's a great performance. And speaking of performances, so you're you um, you scat <laughs> <laughs> when you when you play, and. Um, yeah, yeah, you scat when you play, and you, um, you know, when you you take off on your solos, and you're you're right. Like some guys will play, you know, a few bars with just the guitar, and then they'll then they'll they'll work their way into it. But you just go right for it. <laughs> I mean, you 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 nail it. I mean, you absolutely nail it. So my question for you is, what informs which? Well, it's it's just. <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, it's just when i break i know what i'm going to play and that that uh informs what's going to come out here <laughs> well 
but it's it's awesome. I mean, you do it really, really well. It's it's like it's like seamless. So I mean, it's 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 really really well. And and you gotta have a you know you gotta have control to be able to do that. And you do it great. Oh, thanks. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't think about it as much as I probably did when I first started to do it. But I mean, I know the guitar so well. I guess uh, that it's easier to uh, do it after. You know, well, I think I, the first time I did it was forty years ago on a record. So it's just one of those kind of things that you just keep doing it. Just keep doing it, though, John. Because <laughs> 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 it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> So the guitar, the the album sounds great. the The music is all from, um, you know, from stage and screen, um, which is really cool. And I think it spans uh, like forty years. Is that what it is? So yeah, going yeah. back, the oldest stuff is the is the no 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 net stuff, and then the current stuff is uh, Betsy's from Honeymoon in Vegas. So that's probably I think the most current one on there. I you know I I heard that that's one of the tracks that they sent me. I thought oh, this is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, so let, I want to talk a little bit about uh, there's a there's a few more things I want want to get into other than we already mentioned you talking you played with I mean we, a little history here I mean God Almighty I mean I, we could go for six hours and talk about your history to be honest with you because it, it's that rich you've you've played with you know everybody it seems and it, pretty lucky point. to do that yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky to be in some really good rooms <laughs> you've got well when I saw you. You know, when you did the did the big band singer gig, you right. know, in front of like one of the most amazing big bands in the world, and and you're doing your, I don't know, Sinatra thing, if you will, you yeah. know, yeah, it's like shit. That's pretty. <laughs> that's, that's pretty. That's, that's, that's pretty cool for a guitar player. You know, from you know, I mean, that's that's yeah. that's that's that's. that's that's pretty high cotton, you know, running around. That was that was pretty cool. You know, I don't and know. Then, I don't know if I expected to, that that all those things would happen. You know, that was sort of fun that yeah. uh, I've been able to be in front of orchestras and big bands, and you know, it's just not yeah. just a trio group, and so a lot of different things. So, and you also do a thing with with your wife, mm -hmm. um, Jessica, and I, I I watched a little video of you guys doing a tribute to to Joni Mitchell. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, how did that come about? And what, what, I mean, cause, cause you're not just, you know, you, you do go into other music other than, you know, the, you know, other than what you're known for. Right. But I was really surprised at that. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, when you delve into sure. other things? Yeah. Well, the idea, uh, uh, it goes back to like trying to expand what the, the great American songbook is, I guess. And right. so, um, uh, it started for me with the Beatles record that we made back in 95, 96, I guess. And uh, and then so along the way, when Jessica wanted to make a, a Joni Mitchell record, we would sit down and say, well, how do we translate this into a, to what we do? Mm -hmm. And so that was always the thing, you know, finding, finding uh, you know, ways to swing things that were actually with Joni's things, they were sort of, they sort of built in because there's a jazz component harmonically even to her music that's uh that uh, is is different and, and and great so it's easier to translate those things uh and so it's always those are the fun challenges that we put ourselves in you know whether it's the Beatles or Paul McCartney or um or even just Joe Beam or Joni Mitchell so it's finding ways that we can communicate them as jazz songs to the jazz audience so that the people who know Joni Mitchell but don't know jazz may say what did he do just do there oh that's a Joni Mitchell song I didn't know Joni Mitchell but I knew what you were I knew harmonically or something in a jazz sense that what was going on so well you did a beautiful you did a beautiful rendition of uh, like my analyst told me that that whole oh yeah yeah all that stuff sure you know it's like yeah. uh you you get you get a double appreciation and there you get an appreciation for what Joni wrote you know yeah. and just how advanced that was. Yeah. And all the songs are good. That's the key too. Yeah. I mean, there are some amazing, I think it's more of a challenge for Jessica vocally. There, there it's, uh, it's, there's so much going on in there and she really was great at finding, uh, the, you know, finding those melodies and, and delivering that ball. It's really, it was really terrific. So about a month ago, maybe two months ago, month, month and a half ago, because uh, you and I are Facebook friends, which just means that, you know, you, you agreed to, <laughs> to, to my ad friend thing 
<laughs> and I saw your post about you visiting your dad's guitar in the Smithsonian, which yeah. absolutely floored me. And I, first of all, I did not know that I didn't know anything about it until I read your, you know, read your post about, so, uh, Bob Benedetto. I saw the interview. You saw the interview. Okay. Bob Benedetto built a guitar for your dad and back built two of them actually. And that guitar resides in the Smithsonian Institute. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin to put all the pride. I mean, <laughs> Bob for having a guitar in the Smithsonian, Bucky for having his guitar in the Smithsonian, you for having your father in the Smithsonian with, you know, the, you know, him, because the, the actual display, as you so nicely photographed it, is as much about your dad as it is about the guitar. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really know. a stunning bit of business. And, you know, that, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, we both played that guitar, too. I got to play that guitar as much as he got to play it. And there, and the, I remember when he got the guitar uh, and uh, and playing the guitar and uh how special it was you know that bob built him that guitar which is just so beautiful and uh and then the other thing that my i really was my daughter who got there first uh a year prior and she remembers you know just thinking well i'll go see pop pop's guitar at the smithsonian and she walked in and she just said she fell out because she was thinking geez this guy was the, and we always say he was the son of a grocer from patterson new jersey just wanted to play the damn guitar, you know, and as good as he could play it. And he put in the work. And so there's this, you know, there's his guitar, you know, he was, he used to go on deliveries with his guitar. Your dad you know, went on deliveries and, um... you know, he did, because his father was a grocer, he'd go on deliveries with his guitar. And so he'd drop a thing up and he'd say, can I practice? And he would, and he'd practice. And then they'd call and say, where's Bucky? And they say, he's in the living room, he's practicing. You know, he would, that's, he was that dedicated to playing the guitar. They said, send him back. We got more deliveries, you know. So uh, the the idea that that guitar made it there because of his excellence is, was, it was his moving to me uh, uh, just a, another year later from uh, what my daughter said. I, I thought too, I'd go see the guitar and it wasn't, you know, and I was just, you know, it fell right out. It was just a, it was pretty uh, moving. I totally felt as deeply as I could feel when I watched your post. I went, good God, what a moment that is. I mean, it has to be, has to be um, just, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm coming up with the wrong, overwhelming almost. It is know? overwhelming. It's yeah. very overwhelming. You and it's go and you see your dad, you see the guitar, you think about all the history, you think about the love that the world had for your dad. Yeah. Has, you know, for your dad. And the fact that his nation has honored him in that way. I mean, I don't even, I mean, I, I, it just, it, it floored me. And I was like, you know, in this, in my condo here in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, I went, oh my God. What's up for you in the future now? What's going on? You got this, you got the record, you got the tour. Tell us about the tour. Yeah, we finally get to, uh, we finally get to go uh, out on the road. So we'll, uh, we're going to be in Atlanta, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, in June that the, everything's up on the website, johnpizzarelli.com. So right. we're finally going to get to go uh, to a number of cities between uh, oh, starting when the record comes out, we open at uh, Birdland for a week on the 25th of April, and then we just go everywhere. So um, that's sort of fun and going out with the guys and making music. Uh, we'll do that through August. And then maybe in September, I'll sit down for a little while and uh, relax for a couple of weeks and then go back out and do it again. We And my wife and I will be at the Carlisle in in um, uh, in October, the last two weeks of October. So we're, we're plugging away and happy to do so after uh, we, you know, self-imposed a vacation. <laughs> You've been doing this since you were how old? Uh, well, I've been doing it, well, I started with my father, so it's, it's, it's a little over 40 years, I guess, with my dad, with my own group, it's, it's over, just over 30. You know, you're, you're 62? Yes. Yeah. And there's no, you have as much passion and fire for this, I think, as you ever have. 
It certainly seems it. Oh, by all means. Yeah, you're not, you're not, I, I, you know, you're not slowing up. And, you know, when you, your dad, I mean, he was playing, playing in his 91st birthday for sure, probably 92nd, 93rd, 94th. He went on for a long, long time and doing that. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I just think it's freaking awesome. Well, you know, but, my, I, 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 you know, to that point, my father, uh, I was with him on his 60th birthday. We were in Switzerland, as a matter of fact, with Peter Appleyard and a group. And I think um, he was, I think even from that point on, from, so you're talking another 30 years, he was, he, he got even to be a, a better guitar player, uh, even in the last 30 years. And he was a great guitar player up till then. So it's amazing all the work that he did from, in the last 30 years of his life was so amazing. So that's uh it's, it's a, it's a, it's a nice thing to look forward to. Well, he, I mean, he could play the hell out of single notes, but, oh, yeah. but the two of you, I mean, your, your sense of rhythm and swing is crazy. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I sat next to him for a long time. And so you, when you see, if you're, if you want to be me per se, and you see this a lot. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I want to see that face <laughs> but, they, but, but, but i mean you know if, if somebody wants to learn how to play rhythm swing guitar they need to go no further than you i mean that you you're well, you've mastered it i mean it's, well i was next to the guy you know yeah, no, I, well you we know talked about it, you know all that you know we used to take these there were a couple of these in the house so christmas the day after christmas we'd always go and say he'd say all right get the d'angelo going and he'd say get the other one you go and just to see what how they all I, sound we used to have so much fun with that i don't know if any i i wonder how many guys can appreciate today what you are holding in your hand a second ago Good one, right? <laughs> that is a john d angelico that's an excel isn't it? it there's no name on it that's the, no? that's the other thing there's no name on that guitar the, uh, <laughs> it i mean pretty good one though I, you know, that in and of itself, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, that's the Stradivarius of, uh, yeah. of, uh, archtop guitars. It really is. I mean, I'm sure there's a number that it could be purchased for at some point, but I, you know, they're, they're really unobtainable. They're, I mean, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. They're, they're priceless instruments, even though, yeah, you can buy them, but I mean, they're priceless. I mean, they're just, they're, they are incredible. Well, and there and there it guitar, is. Yeah. That guitar has been played. You know that's the other thing too. It's 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 got some vibration on it, and uh, you know the beauty. That's the beauty of of this guitar was that he he. It's really been played, and uh, I and you know uh, they're they're not. Uh, I mean, he's got holes in it. It's got you know where he had the dearmin pickup hooked into it. And yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the JT connection. Okay. And when I saw you playing with him, I said, damn, <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So, it, I mean, I, you guys like old friends Did he just call you up one day and say, hey, I understand you're the guy. I mean, how did all that come together? Um, I I did um, on uh, October Road, I played on two tracks, Mean Old Man, and then he did Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Oh, yeah. I, I knew Russ Teitelman. Russ Teitelman's a friend of mine, and he was producing that record. And he said, James has got this sort of jazz tune, so I want you and Larry Goldings and Gad and, and Jimmy Johnson for this one session. So we did that. And then uh, James really liked the rhythm guitar that I was playing, and um, uh, the, he did a Christmas record. Uh, and so they called me to do that. with Dave. I can't Gibson. believe that you played the guitar on that track. Yeah, I, I, did, I covered that. For years, yeah. that exact version. Yeah. And that so was you. Yeah. yeah. You know, when he goes, um, uh, Christmas, man, that is. Yeah, fun. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, I thought, James, wow. You know, all right, you're up in your game, bro. You know, because <laughs> he, I mean, what, what did Miles Davis say about James? D chord, D chord. You met, you own the D chord. <laughs> you know, I'm going, man. So that's you playing that. Yeah. So I played rhythm on that, and then, and so then we did the Christmas thing. I played rhythm on a few things on that, 
And then one day, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, he wrote me a thing and I said, I want to got on my phone. It said, uh, I want to do an album of standards and you demand it said. Wow. And I said, okay. And we spoke and I went up to his place and we sat in a barn and we played a couple of things. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, we went back and started to record. We would do two songs a day for like two weeks. We'd start, we'd, we'd meet in the morning, have a cup of coffee. And while we were sitting, he'd come up with the guitar and he'd start to go, you know, uh, start to come up with chords. And, yeah. and, uh, and then we'd look at some tunes or agree on a song. And then from like 12 to six, we would, the process would, would go from, uh, you know, for six hours. And by six o'clock, we were listening to what we had done. And then uh, his studio manager, Ellen, would come in and say, you know, I think maybe you know, the guys want to eat. <laughs> and so me and Dave O'Donnell and James would eat dinner. And then at, at somewhere near the end of dinner, James would take the guitar out again. And, and around 7.30 till about 12.30, and around 12.30, we'd have the second song of the day. And then he'd say, okay, and we would do that again. We did that for a number of days in a row. And we came, and, and it was as wonderful an experience as you could have. And it was just the three of us. And then he went and, uh, you know, put everything else on it that, that you hear on the record. But he likes to say it's essentially a guitar album. And uh, we had a great time playing together. And I, I, you know, like anybody else, I, you know, adore his guitar playing as much as everything else that he does. And yeah. as a person, he's a one of the great people. You know, he's a great person. Yeah. So, um, uh, it was a great experience. And, you know, he, we would do, I played the seven string classical on that. And then at the end, he'd say, okay, you know, put the rhythm. So he'd say, Whippoorwill's call. He'd play, play the rhythm. He always liked the rhythm guitar too on certain things. So yeah, great to do. And then um, it came out about six weeks before the, or two weeks before the pandemic hit. So we got to do the TV shows and uh, together and it was really great. He just turned 75 yeah yeah he just turned 75 happy birthday james That's yeah incredible is there something that you want to talk about that we haven't mentioned we haven't talked about at all uh anything well, of, of interest i'm a particularly proud of the pat Metheny record that i made uh before this one which was called better days ahead and uh, it's just solo guitar record that i made uh but everything else uh stands on its own i mean uh we, we pretty much covered it we what yeah. you're doing is important. Well, I think the, you know, thank you. And what I do think, uh, I think that when I talk about listening to uh, this music, since I was, as long as I can remember, I've heard this music at its highest level. So right. I never uh, thought of it other than one of the great styles of music it's not about a period of time or anything else but a style of music and so you know when you hear this music played by benny goodman in your living room or by or by zoot sims or by <laughs> you know you just or even like you know when you sit in a room with james taylor and he's got an idea and there's all that history behind his hands oh my god it's something that is uh you know, you 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 pay attention to. So I just think that that's uh, oh, my, my goal is to try and do it as well as I can do it because uh, that's where I that's where I came from. Most guys or girls, most people would say, my father or my mother or both were huge fans of Benny Goodman, and I heard his music in my living room, living room all the time. But in your case, you heard. Benny freaking Goodman <laughs> playing Benny freaking Goodman in your living room. I mean, who does that? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Really? I was going to give me, give me about three seconds. I want to show you something. I forgot to bring it out. You can do the musical interlude. <laughs> Oh, 
That is tremendous. So this, folks, whoa, this is is a Ryan Thorell guitar. Well, I know very well. And I know that Ryan just built you an instrument. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have that. Um, I just wanted to let you know that we. That's beautiful. Isn't that something? Yeah. It's uh, look at the color. This color, by the way, is something that Ryan came up with. This guitar is about eight or nine years old. Beautiful. And when this guitar is on stage, it just is amazing what, what it looks like. Anyway, I want to do a little shout out for Ryan because I know that he just built you a seven string. Yep. And um, and he's been a, a friend of mine for a long time. And uh, I, you know, I, I, you know, I was I a, a buddy of mine uh, has a one of those old Charlie Christian one fifties, you know, with yeah, the ball, yeah, sure, uh, Matt Munisteri, and I said to uh, we were talking about it a year ago, and I was thinking, oh, I would love to have one of those guitars. I think it it, it went along with um, just uh, some kind of connection to my father and knowing about all those guitars and the pickup sure. things, and uh, I called up Ryan and I and but my point was is that. Buying a 150 for me would be great. I'd have it, and I'm going like, well, I'm never going to play it. It's a six string instrument, and then I'd just have it, and I would just sit there. Yeah. So right. <laughs> think, well, somebody, I called up Ryan. I said, you want to build this guitar with seven strings? I said, and we went, you know, we pretty much used those dimensions. Yeah. And uh, you know, no cutaway, and you know, put one of those pickups in there, and. Uh, he built a hell of a guitar. We're just putting the getting the pickup set straight on it, and it sounded great. And it's like, oh, I can play that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. It's, I, yeah, I like to tell people I'm not. I am not a collector. Right. Yeah, I, I, everything gets played, you know. So, man, thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. The record is coming out. It's called Stage and Screen. Stage and Screen. All right, and it's going to be out the twenty first. Of April twenty, and how, and, and how are they going to get it through all the usual stuff? Or all what? the usual places where fine records are downloaded. All right, <laughs> hopefully paid for. And, and we'll see um, you out on the road. We'll have copy hard copies out you, on the you're road. You're going to be on the road, and I'm going to get a hold of somebody to see if I can get to your show in Atlanta. Great, Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with John Pizzeroy. Thank you, John, so much. Appreciate it. Have a great day, buddy. Bye bye Thank now. You, my friend. Bye.